Christians enduring persecution in restrictive countries are calling for prayer, and Sunday millions around the world will do exactly that. Appearing on the CBN program, The Global Lane, uh, Voice of the Martyrs Todd Nettleton explains why we should pray. I think there's two reasons. I think one is the scriptural call. Uh, you know, as Hebrews 13, 3 says, remember those in prison as if you were in prison with them. What would you want people to do if you were in prison? You'd want to know that they're praying for you. The second reason, though, is because it's what our persecuted brothers and sisters ask us to do. When we go and we meet with them and we say, hey, how can American Christians help you? The first thing they say is pray for us. So it is, this day, International Day of Prayer for Persecuted Christians, is a direct response to their number one request. So, Todd, should we pray for the persecution against followers of Christ to stop? How should we pray? You know, I, I think it's easy to pray for it to stop, but that's not their prayer. Their prayer is, Lord, help us to be faithful in spite of the suffering, in spite of the persecution. So uh, I think that's an important thing for us to pray with them, that God will encourage them and allow them to remain faithful. The other thing that I encourage people to pray for is pray that they will know they're being prayed for, that the Holy Spirit will let them know they're not forgotten, they're not alone. That's one of the lies that the enemy uses against persecuted Christians but they're not forgotten. And I pray that God, as we pray for them, that God will let them know they're being prayed for, they're being remembered, even right at that moment. And, and I know those you talk to after their prison experience always say they felt the prayers, they made a big difference. Now, I know this year on November 8th through the 10th, the Voice of the Martyrs is holding a Fathom event in select theaters around the country, and it's the premiere of your new film, Sabina. I think it was about four years ago when VOM released the film Tortured for Christ, and that was Richard Wormbrand's story. Why now the film Sabina? Well, as you mentioned, Tortured for Christ, the movie, tells the story of the Wormbrands under the communist in Romania. But there's a lot of the story that that first film didn't tell. Part of it was... How did these two people, very successful, very intelligent people, become believers in Christ? They were both born into Jewish families. This film shares the story of how they came to know Christ, how they came to know each other, and then how they suffered, how they were willing, even in the early years of their faith, when Romania was controlled by the Nazis, how Richard and Sabina suffered even under the Nazis before the communist takeover and before the stories that, that maybe became more well known in Tortured for Christ. Okay, Todd, let's look at a quick clip. Although Sabina Wormbrand was a Christian, she, as you mentioned, was also an ethnic Jew. Her Jewish family members were killed by the Nazis, yet she helps the Nazis. And in this clip, a Nazi soldier reminds Sabina that the Russians will kill her if they discover that she's helping the Germans. I will protect you from the Russians. I can't protect you from the wrath of God. Why? Why would you risk your life for a German soldier? Todd, I know this would shock many people that Sabina Wormbrand actually protected Nazi soldiers from the Russians, even though they killed her family members. So why did she do that, Todd? You know, Sabina had experienced the love and forgiveness of Christ, and it so transformed her that she could show love to her enemies. She could show love to the very people that killed her family. It is, it is one of the most amazing displays of the gospel. I know it would seem hard for us to do, but does that mean that they had stronger faith than maybe we have or what? You know, they had access to the same Holy Spirit power that we have access to. And so I think, you know, one of the things as we hear stories of persecuted Christians, it's easy to say, well, you know, they they have a Superman faith and I just have normal man faith. I could never be like them. I could never do that. Uh, but the reality, and I think if, if Richard and Sabina were still alive, what they would say is, no, God empowered us to do that. It wasn't our power, it wasn't our strength, it was God working through us, and we were just open to let him do that. That's a choice we have too. Maybe not facing persecution, but all of us face trials, all of us face challenges, and we can choose, just as Richard and Sabina did, to love those who are maybe working against us, maybe we don't like them, maybe they irritate us. We can choose to love and forgive just as Sabina did.